Well, four new motorcycles and a brand new operating system. This is what Ola Electric has announced on what it really calls it the customer day when India celebrates its Independence Day. And of course, that of course it means, uh, you know, uh, the customer's relation with the independence of its freedom. And I'm joined by the CFO of Ola Electric, Mr. Arun Jair. Arun, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you know, congratulations on four new products, a brand new operating system. Uh, you know, tell us about how the journey has been from planning to execution and today launching it. Uh, uh, how do you feel as a company who started with the ride hailing app, then eventually moved on to a, a, a scooter app, a, a scooter company, now now a motorcycle? So, uh, what's uh, what's the feeling there? See, the feeling is um, ecstatic. A lot of uh, hard work has gone into it, and I would say a lot of smart work has gone into it, because you see, um, electric uh, is all about technology at the core, right? And there are five technologies, which is software battery, cell, drivetrain, and electronics. And that's really what brings the electric vehicle to life. And uh, the interesting part is most of the incumbents, not just in India, but in the world, uh, don't understand new technology, right? And it's very difficult for somebody to disrupt themselves. And that's where, and Ola is by definition a disruptor to the industry and represents uh, electric revolution in India and India for the world. So we've, very, very carefully allocated capital. We built our teams because a lot of it is in-house, what we do, right? We have a software team, we have an engineering team, we have R&D team for sales. We have to pace our capital needs. We have to do it smartly. We have to take customers into confidence, investors into confidence, all stakeholders. We work closely with the government to evolve policies which are excellent for the country, for the industry, and then for the company. Right, that's the order which uh, we follow. So it's been a lot of work starting 24 months ago and where we have now reached starting from one product, one plant, now to almost two plants and uh, almost nine products at this point of time, which is physical and uh, seen uh, in front of uh, the whole world today. Uh, Arun, I'll also ask you on how much capital infusion has been done when it comes to developing these four products and uh, how much capex are you really spending on uh, building a mobility uh, for motorcycles going forward? See, our uh, vision is really to build the EV hub in uh, this place. This is uh, Pochampalli, Krishnagiri. It's where our Ola Future Factory is. And over 1,500 acres, there will be the Future Factory for two-wheelers, 10 million ultimately, a million uh, four-wheelers, and 100 gigawatt hour of cell capacity. That's what will come out here in let's say by 2027, 2030. Now, what we have invested so far, we have done very, very smartly. The numbers are all already out in our public. If you see our uh, financial results, you will see that we have invested uh, just about 1,000 to 1,500 crores to build this whole thing so efficiently at this point of time and bringing out these nine products. Now, if you look at our approach in scooters, it's a platform. If you look at our motorcycle that we launched today, you'll see a huge amount of similarity whether it's the cruiser or the roadster or the adventurer, right? You'll see that the core is similar, looks similar. It's a platform and the top hat has been different. Why I say this, it's, it's again efficient capital. And the capital we've invested so far is all about building the people and the team. The engineering setup is common for two wheelers, whether it's a motorcycle or a two wheeler or a scooter that is. Software teams are common. The drivetrain or powertrain teams are common. Design team is uh, common again, right? So this whole uh, platformized approach is about investing in people, investing in technology, which makes it the most efficient way to build an electric vehicle. You don't build each one individually. And very interestingly, the work that we are doing in two wheelers, nearly about 30% is common to cars also, right? If you see the software system, the operating system, it'll be the same backbone the electronics architecture will be more expanded for the car. But at the same time, the principles are the same. The cells we use in the two-wheeler will be the same that we use in the car. For example, the cell that I use in my scooter today is the same that goes into the Tesla car. Whereas when I bring my car out, it'll be even more advanced cells, 4680 that you saw that we unveiled today. To give customers a sense of understanding, 4680 is like the 5G of telecom. Right, the cells that we are using today is like the 4G. And what other companies are trying to build in India is like 3G. 
because you can't just buy companies and license technology and build cells. So what we are doing is absolutely cutting edge in the world. When we come out with our cells in December, we'll be only one of the three companies globally that is doing 5G in cell technology, okay. right? So that's how deep Ola is and that's how Ola has transformed to your question about where it started as a group, ride hailing to where it is today, which is absolutely a technology powerhouse, a contemporary technology powerhouse in the new energy space, addressing mobility, which has always been the biggest revolution in this world. And right now, ice to ev I can't see a bigger revolution in this world. So that's really where we are playing for. So Arun, uh, does it concern you re uh, regarding uh, the recent numbers that came out in public uh, of, uh, you know, uh, losses being widening? Are you kind of concerned or you think this is just an initial hiccup and the company would eventually uh, soon move towards profitability? See, the numbers that you all have seen are very old set of numbers. It is FY22 numbers, which is almost 15, 18 months ago numbers, right? That is the first year of investments. So when you invest in R&D, when you invest in people, it shows up on your costs. And as volumes pick up, then they repay themselves. And that's exactly what's happening in this year. That's exactly what's happening as you speak. Now look at the whole Gen 2 launch by itself that we have done today. And uh, our founder, Bhavesh, took us through how it is more cost efficient, it's more energy efficient, it's more lightweight. And hence, we have achieved more with less. So the Gen 2, and I remember having spoken to you earlier a few months ago that Gen 2 is coming. Mm -hmm. And that's what helps us build a very, very robust unit economics that makes us completely independent of any reliance on subsidy, mm -hmm. right? As we speak, we are already planning Gen 3, mm -hmm. which will come out in the future. So it's all about technology, engineering, and driving the cost down, which is a continuous journey for us. And uh, certainly in the medium and long run, we are building a company that will be soundly profitable, sustainable, generate its own internal accruals, and carry investments forward. That's really our strategy. Sure. Right? And also towards uh, cell technology, I'd like to ask you, uh, you know, uh, are you going also planning to bid for lithium reserves that the country, the government is many states are offering to have. Are you also interested in that? And secondly, uh, the backbone of a vehicle, of an electric vehicle is of course the cell. Uh, how, you just mentioned about 5G in cell technology that you're developing. How uh, efficient would that be? And what are the timelines that we are looking at? Yeah. See, in the cell, as a business or as a area, there are three pillars. One is technology. Second is in scale manufacturing. And third is supply chain, right? Technology, we have cracked it. Right, as I said, 5G is what we are bringing out in NMC cylindrical, which is 4680, and you saw a working cell today, right? We have the best research center as well. Next is manufacturing. I'm sure you, if you just walk up on the south of our future factory, you'll see that the Giga factory is already coming up. We are done with the foundations, we are starting with the pillars. So the commercial production is towards the end of 2023 calendar, early 2024. So we do commercial production, then we ramp it up and stabilize it over the next three to four months because the yield is the most important thing when you manufacture at large scale. You need to hit the 70-80% yield now and let's say by mid-2024, you need to start hitting the 85-90% yield, which is a global standard. So that will be our journey in terms of what we will ramp up. We'll start with about 1.5 gigawatt hour it will scale up by the end of next year what the known plan is already five gigawatt hour and uh, depending on how our balance sheet and the business shapes up including the demand we'll be very open to scaling up to even 10 gigawatt hour now the third uh, part of it is a supply chain where you know, again your question was supply chain is nothing but we are working with the government of india to ensure that india not only manufactures lithium-ion cells but gets the global ecosystem into india Right, the global ecosystem and cathode, whether it's a calcination, precursor, refinery, and the mining, to your question. Production of anode, which is all about carbon. Electrolyte is all chemicals. Separator is all physics, right? We are working with global corporations who want to come invest in India, put in their capital. So will we be interested in mining uh, of lithium? Absolute yes. Are we going to do it ourselves? Are we going to partner with people? Are we going to put our capital ourselves? What will we do? That's a strategy that we can't reveal now, that we will come to know as we implement our strategy that we have in our mind. 
Also, Arun, what are the timelines of getting these uh, beautiful uh, bikes on the roads and when, when can the general public have it? Um, as we have announced, reservations are open now. So, uh, and we will start delivering towards the end of 2024 okay. um, and early 2025. So, we'll start delivering these beauties uh, by then and hopefully, uh, by then what we expect is that the entire scooter market hmm. has been penetrated literally 80 to 100%. Okay. Because if you look at the range of products that we have with Ola now, it is starting from literally 70,000 all the way up to 150,000. Mm. So this is 100% of the scooter TAM. And hence, why does anybody who uses a scooter need to buy an ICE vehicle anymore? It's not required. You have the clear electric choice and you have the clear cost advantage of more money in your pocket. If you miss it, you know, Unfortunately, we are going ahead and addressing is that a stupid choice to buy an ICE vehicle anymore with the kind of scooters that we've launched. And hence, we really appeal all customers to absolutely, absolutely move to electric now, right? And that's what we want to do with motorcycles as well when we start delivering motorcycles. Today, nobody's been able to bring a decent motorcycle product EV market, into the EV market. That's almost 13 million motorcycles a year. And if you see these bikes that you are bringing out, we will obviously come across price segments. We have not announced any of that today. And it will be very similar to the scooter strategy. Okay. Right? We are here to address the whole TAM. Everybody's need, every customer's need. And that's how it will shape up for us. Last question. Today also 100 expansion points. So dealership, uh, sorry, uh, service networks were announced. Uh, where does the touch point go now? And what is the service network currently? And what are the expansion plans that you're looking forward to? Very, very simple message to the users and cons uh, consumers. We have 1,000 experience centers. Okay. You can go buy your product, touch, feel, everything under one shop. You can go visit and go back and buy it digitally, right? Out of 1,000 experience centers, every second one is also a service center. So you have 500 service centers after this 100 that we are launching today. So this is more than enough for a couple of million vehicles to be sold per annum, right? And as demand keeps going up, I can assure you that we will keep expanding our footprint. Today, I, I also believe that today, company-owned EV network, we are probably the largest in the country. Thousand outlets, company-owned, there is nobody else. Everybody else is on a dealership model, right? We, ours is our own experience centers. 500 service centers, again, right is a, a number one in the country so buying experience riding experience and maintaining experience ola is the best and uh, we'll leave behind the rest all right well ola is the best and we leave behind the rest is the message from arun uh, talking about the strategy of the company thank you for joining us thank you and wishing you all the best so that was mr arun jia cfo talking about how the company plans to expand its dealership networks and bring these four bikes out into the market as soon as possible if you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.